Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Two weeks ago, we did a video of the top 10 most underrated Nissans ever built. And then last week, we did a video of the top 10 most underrated Hondas ever built. And so now I found it only right to do the top 10 most underrated Mazdas ever built. Mazda itself is just such an underrated brand. And so because of the fact that nobody really talks about them besides the Miata and the RX-7, there is a lot of untapped potential. I honestly could do a part two and find another whole 10 cars to talk about, but probably not gonna do that. <laughs> anyway, guys. Uh, my name is Mark Rudd and welcome back to the channel. If you guys want to support the channel any more than you already are, head on over to www.smoothstance.com slash shop to pick yourself up any hats, shirts, or shorts. And with that out of the way, guys, let's get right into the video. All right, so number 10 is the Mazda Miata NC or the third generation Miata. And it comes with a two liter inline four that makes 167 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. And right off the bat, I want to mention that this is what I love so much about Mazda. Most of their cars are rear wheel drive and rear wheel drive is just freaking sick nasty. All right. Now the MC Miata looks honestly pretty awful. I will happily admit that. And I know you guys are going to agree with me on that one, but as a sports car, it's better than the NA Miata. I know you hate to hear it, but it's the truth. Uh, I have a perfect way to describe it. All right. One time I was on TikTok and I saw somebody say, the NC Miata is a better car, but a worse Miata. And ever since he said that, I can't stop thinking about it. It is so true. It is a better car. It's a better sports car. It handles better. It has more power, but it just isn't a Miata. But they do need more love, man. Use them as like drift cars or something. I don't know. Just but give, give them something. Number nine is the Mazda Speed 6, which comes with a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four that makes a nice 215 horsepower and it was all wheel drive. And they look really cool. Like I think this is, this version is way better than the hatchback version, which in case you don't know is the Speed 3. Please don't kill me in the comments. I still really like the Mazda Speed 3. I just, I just think that's another great Mazda, but people talk about it all the time and it kind of got overplayed now. Plus I've seen a very, a very good amount of speed sixes rolling around and they always catch my eye like every time i see them i'm like hey that's a cool car and the fact that they're all-wheel drive and not front-wheel drive also plays a big role in it like you can have a blast in an all-wheel drive car during the winter but front-wheel drive it's just kind of boring like they they are cool but it's kind of boring i really hope mazda makes another speed six with their new version though because they need some more sports cars they got the miata right now and that's about it Number eight is the newest Mazda 3, which comes with a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four that makes a very nice 250 horsepower and it is front wheel drive. And I know I just said that I like the Speed 6 better and I do like the Speed 6 better, but I think this one is way more underrated. I mean, the new Mazda 3 is almost never modified now and it makes no sense to me. Sure, it doesn't have like huge horsepower numbers, but 250 horsepower is still pretty good. Like the Focus ST has like, I think, two more horsepower than that and plus you don't gotta keep it stock man like it's a tuner car tune it you know put some work into it i really wish that more people modified these things because i'm honestly very curious as to how much power it could actually make once people started tinkering with it but either way people like to just kind of slam them on the ground right now and that works because the looks of these cars are the new freaking they're the new Mazda speed three like they really are they look awesome they look really good and but I just, I just want to see some more of the engine. Like, is it good? Number seven is the Mazda 323 GTR four wheel drive, which comes with a 1.8 liter turbocharged inline four that makes it very, very nice for its time. 207 horsepower. And it was obviously all wheel drive before all wheel drive was cool. Like everything that this car did was so ahead of its time. The car looks like if the Pulsar, you know, the Nissan Pulsar, it looks like that if it had a crimson chin and I freaking love it. Now I have no idea if this car is like good tuning wise, but all the websites are saying it is. And the fact that they, they built the car to be a rally car only kind of further proves that theory since those dudes would tune a freaking Prius if they could, but they look really good. Unfortunately though, we didn't get them in the States, which is honestly probably the reason why it isn't that much popular over here for us. But please, somebody import one of these things and make a freaking Gap mobile out of it, though, because I know it can. I know it can do it. Like, 207 horsepower, all-wheel drive before everybody else was doing it. It was the hot hatch before hot hatch. Number six is the Mazda RX-3, which comes with a one liter, two rotor rotary engine that makes a very small 109 horsepower. And it was rear-wheel drive, but... Hear me out. All the time at the time for a little Japanese car, that was pretty good. And it did it all in a very small rotary that literally is smaller than a motor than like most leader bikes today. 
Speaking of which, wouldn't it be actually really cool to see a freaking motorcycle swap with a rotary? That would be awesome. Somebody please do that. It'd be really cool. Anyways, the car looks are just timeless and it is now a obvious classic, but nobody talks about them anymore. Like the RX-7 just completely stole the spotlight for any other of the RX cars that Mazda made. And it's just very sad. By the way, the RX-2 is also a pretty damn underrated Mazda, but I just didn't want to include both of them but they because they kind of look the same but either way they're both really cool and i like the rx3 just a little bit better number five is the mazda miata nd which stands for new donkey or it's the newest model it's the newest model miata and it comes with a two liter inline four that makes 181 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive to be honest with you guys i think the new model miata is the best looking Miata to ever come out. I said it like I love the aggressive but tiny styling to it and it's all modern and it has a lot of sharp lines on it and it just it works so well. Plus it didn't like lose that Miata touch like the NC did and I'm super happy to see that. Mazda was like you know what I'm not going to give up on our sports car and then when the N NC did so bad they instead took what people were saying and made it better which a lot of companies don't do. A lot of companies will like be like oh the car guys don't like it that's fine our sales are up and then they just keep doing what they were doing but me mazda was like oh the car guys don't like it damn we got to make sure this next one is a actual car guy car and they did great with it like the miata is just such a for everything i've heard i've obviously never driven one but from everything i've heard it's such a driver's car and that's awesome number four is the mazda speed protege which comes with a two liter turbocharged inline four that makes 170 horsepower and it was front wheel drive and looked pretty damn sick to be honest with you dude like it was built to take the boring old daily driver mazda or just the mazda protege it wasn't the mazda speed protege and they just made it cooler and they did it so well like i love the fact that they didn't stop at the boring one and instead to decided to make it a bit cooler and now that i think about it that's what mazda has been doing since like the day they were made they take these cars that people are like eh, it's all right and then it's like what about this and then you're like whoa okay now it's good now we're talking the protege also has that like wonderful tuner styling to it that cars like the civic the celica and the centra all had in the early 2000s but for some reason it just never took off and never got as much recognition and it's sad because it's a really cool car it's a freaking tuner car of the 2000s Third place is the Mazda Yunos Cosmo, which comes with the only two liter three rotor in existence and it produced a nice 300 horsepower while the car was rear wheel drive and looking sick nasty dude. A long time ago, I said this was the most underrated car of all time or underrated JDM car of all time, but I have to take that back a, like a lot now because since I learned about it, a lot of other people have too and a lot of people on TikTok are learning about the Cosmo and it's really cool to see that. I'm super happy to see that. It is a legendary car and it deserves all the recognition, but it's definitely not as underrated as it used to be. But yeah, it is the only three rotor to ever come from a factory production car ever, which it obviously is legendary itself, but the looks and exclusive exclusivity is that how you say that word also helps it a lot like it looks really good nobody can get it and they have huge potential i just can't believe that they aren't as legendary as like the fdrx7 because they honestly deserve it Second place silver medal is the Mazda RX-7 FB, which comes with a very small 1.1 liter two rotor rotary engine, making a very small 100 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive and looked awesome. Like I know, I understand that the engine in this car is literally less powerful than the RX-3 and it was made like 20 years later, but listen, power isn't everything, dude, okay? The car looks like a literal piece of history and I love it for that. Plus they are a very good foundation for a swap and and since literally nobody talks about these cars anymore, since, well, let's face it, the FC and the FD RX-7 just completely took the spotlight and just ran with it, they are a extremely cheap car to buy right now. Like, you can buy an FB RX-7 under 5K all day long. And like I said, yes, it doesn't have the best engine, but you can find a Junkyard LS and put it in there, and boom. I just find it funny how we went from, like, one extreme to the other. Like, we were just talking about how legendary the Unos Cosmo is. And I know you guys are going to be like, how is the FB RX-7 above the Unos Cosmo? But listen man i hear a lot of people talk about it now and never hear anybody talk about the fb so i put it one spot higher but first place the most underrated mazda in my opinion ever built is the mazda mx6 which comes with a 2.5 liter v6 that makes 164 horsepower and it was front wheel drive and honestly that's a pretty damn low number for a v6 but if only they made these things rear wheel drive, they would have been freaking eat, eaten up, all right? This one's honestly a little bit weird because when this car first came out, everybody kind of liked it and had no problems with it. And then 
they were like, yeah, it's a Mazda MX-6. It's pretty cool, whatever, you know, it's just another sports car. They didn't hate it, but they didn't love it either. But then the world went through a very weird phase where it was, you were a ricer now if you owned a JDM car. And it seems like everybody just completely forgot that this car existed when they shouldn't. Like, personally, I don't think it should have been labeled as a new MX-5, but it's still such a cool car. Like, if you look past that name tag, it's a very cool car. It's a very cool Mazda. Like, the looks alone are super sick. They're easily one of the best looking cars on this list. And even though the engine is, yes, pretty slow and unreliable and not the best, the car has so much untapped potential. And let's be honest, most Mazdas are usually just swapped with, the, with something else anyway. But that is the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And it is Friday, baby, so enjoy your freaking weekend. Let me know any Mazdas that I missed, even though I know there are a lot. You can say the RX-2. You can say the RX-8 is pretty damn unreliable. Uh, I'm sure there are others. The Mazda Bongo. Let me know if you guys know what the Mazda Bongo is. That thing's hilarious. The AutoZam. The Mazda AutoZam. Those are pretty underrated. The, the first ever Cosmo. There's a bunch that you could say are underrated. I just couldn't include them all in this video. These are my personal top 10 most underrated Mazdas out there. So don't, don't kill me if you're a Mazda guy. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the love and support. Das Vidanya. Have a nice day.